in 2001, three in 2000. Referees calling time here for well, a moment. Know, it's a mouthpiece, I believe. If that's the case with Robinson, it's a mouthpiece. If that's the case with Robinson, then win or lose this fight, he should be very encouraged because he's in with a rising contender in his backyard, in, his, in, in the rising contender's backyard, in the rain, in these kind of less than perfect conditions, weathered an early storm, and although he's been inactive, relatively inactive, has put up a good, strong showing. So win or lose, Robinson should be encouraged by this performance. You can see the people at ringside with umbrellas in the background. We are in an amphitheater here in the back of the park at Six Flags where it's been raining all afternoon, but the ring has not really been that affected except for a certain part of it. The far side of the ring, as you are watching right now, has been hit with some sprinkles. So the fighters as well have kind of like made this ring a bit smaller, trying to avoid that area for the slippery canvas as Robinson continues to launch his punches in on but You know, and last week I was explaining how a southpaw well, we'll get to that next. We'll get to that next round. You guys are still going at it. All right. While these two are still going out in the ring, we prepare for our main event. Cassandra Henderson is standing by with Ebo Elder. Cassandra. Thanks, Mario. Well, Ebo, this is your toughest opponent yet. Why take this fight now, and why in front of your hometown? Well, I'm going to be proven a lot by beating Emmanuel Claudi and uh, who better to do it in front of than my, my great friends and family. Obviously, you have a different strategy for fighting this guy. Tell me about it. It's really no different than uh, do my thing, go in there and be focused, be uh, spiritually prepared, mentally prepared. I'm physically prepared, so it's just a matter of doing, uh, doing the same thing I do in the gym every day, just intensifying it a little bit. What about emotionally? How's the pressure? Are you trying to ink a deal with a major network? Your friends and family are here. Tough opponent. Describe the pressure. I really enjoy it. Um, this is a fighter's dream, you know, getting to, getting to do something like this. I'm really blessed. Um, having such good friends and family and fans and everybody being here is really a blessing, a total blessing. All right, good luck to you. Let's go back to Mario Max. All right, thank you very much. Easy to root for that kid. He's a very interesting young man, an amazing story behind his career. And, and easy to root for these two guys the way they're, they're as hard as they've been fighting. As I was saying last round, last week I made the point that a southpaw, with a southpaw you want to keep your lead foot outside of his lead foot to move him in the direction you want him to move, to make him essentially retreat. And the southpaw wants to move counterclockwise. When he moves clockwise, he's actually retreating. He just can't get as much on his punches. And it's vice versa for an orthodox fighter. In this case, Bell seems to be conscious of moving away from Robinson from his left hand. Not necessarily always keeping. You see whose outside foot is outside of, of whose outside foot. In other words, Robinson's right foot tends to be outside Bell's left foot. And yet Bell is moving away from Robinson's left hand. He's just sick of getting tagged with it. But even if you're moving away from the left hand, unless you keep that outside foot in front of the other guy's outside foot, it's not going to make a difference because you're still going to be in range for it. Call it the Georgia Waltz. And if anyone can understand what I just said, congratulations, because I could barely make it out. like a who's on first routine. Yeah. I'm just letting you go with that. Yeah, right. Well, the two most pivotal rounds for both these fighters still remain, but here we are midway through the eighth, and Max, I'm not going to ask you how you actually score in this fight, but how do you see this momentum? Who, who would it say it's leaning in favor of right now? Uh, I've been watching the fight same as the people at home, man. I don't know. Yeah, this is the kind of fight you got to be sitting down, not second-guessing the judge, but sitting down and thinking to yourself in order to score a fight like this, every second of every round, who's winning this round and why? Who's winning the round and why? And at the end of the round, you put down your score, your score who won it, it's 10-9, then you give the guy who scored a knockdown if there was one an extra point, or you take off a point if there's been a, pump, a point deduction, and in the next round, you start from a clean slate. Who's winning this round and why? And at the end, you add up your scorecards. There's no kind of schoolyard scoring, as we said, where you say, well, you kind of get the feeling who's carrying the momentum, who's... That, that, don't, that don't exist in professional scoring. There should be. Well, look at, well, look at about... Look at Bell right now, just pushing around, around Robinson, and you're talking about one guy carrying the other. It's literally the case here inside the ring, Max. They started to mull each other a little bit. 
those, you know, if those gloves are in fact waterlogged with, you know, it's been raining, it, not only are they going to land harder, they're going to be heavier to throw. It's going to wear you out more. There goes that right hand again, and there comes another one. And Robinson, he's been doing a good job, a decent job of timing the right, but I don't think good enough. He's been considering how predictable Bell's been with the right hand. He could be doing a better job of timing it, avoiding it, and countering. Well, the left has been the bigger difference in this fight for both fighters, but for Robinson in particular. Two rounds left in this amazing first fight of the night. Wow. Put water where you need it with Menard's super selection of garden hoses. This Flexon reinforced 50-foot hose is on sale just $4.98. Get extra reach with this 150-foot four-ply hose, $19.99. Store your hose on this wall-mounted reel from Suncast. On sale just $9.99. This graphite-reinforced hose reel cart comes already assembled, only $14.99. Get All-American savings during the All-American sale at Menard's. Save big money at Menard's. This is my final plea. I am a gecko. Not to be confused with Geico, which could save you hundreds on car insurance. So stop calling me. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. So you want to change your name? People confusing you with Geico, calling you at all hours? What name would you like? Komodo Dragon, please. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. Mario Diaz and Max Kellerman, along with Cassandra Henderson, standing by ringside for round number nine between Jason Robinson and O'Neal Bell. And you can Again, see you see Bell's thing. He falls in with a right hand, and it's very predictable. Robinson, at this point in the fight, rather than just mauling each other, they're getting angry at each other. You're in a fight. This corner. O'Neal, to this corner, to this corner. And George Chip now. I know. I'm We're going to fight. I'm going to disqualify both of you. Let's think about that. Chip's not playing games. We're going to fight. I'm going to disqualify both of you. You both lose your fucking purse. George Chip not taking anything from anybody here this evening. He's coming in here, and he's making them. And that match, we just mentioned the slip earlier. You could see that. That the oh, the, ring, Bell just slipped the ring is slick, and this referee is not playing games. He's letting him know exactly that it, who's in charge. This is not going to get out of control. Hey, if Robinson's mad at Bell right now, the best thing he can do is just wait for, him to, for Bell to fall in with a right hand, counter him with a left hand, rather than mauling each other and, 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 and acting as if it's the last, last round of Rocky 1 or 2. You know, <laughs> just throwing caution to the wind. Time the guy, because Bell's doing the same thing every round. Well, they're fighting now. There it is. And neither fighter can afford this qualification this late in a fight at this stage of their career. No, and you could see the way Chip told them, the way the ref told them both, he's going to disqualify them, and he was very serious about it. And they believed him. He convinced them. He essentially told them, you know, you get DQ'd, you ain't gonna get paid. Whether or not that's true, fighters after fighting this hard don't want to hear that. Well, usually there's a hearing with the commission and they have a meeting and decide by way you're of the You're not But you can about see that, that he's pushing them out, yeah. literally out of the ring. But you, uh, oh. part of that may, may be because they're slipping all over the place, they're holding on to each other for balance. In this situation, you ain't thinking, no, uh, I'm gonna go before the commission get my purse anyway. You're thinking, I want to get paid for this. Well, this is too tough not to get paid for. O'Neal Bell is not really throwing as many punches in this round because of the fact that I think he's just pretty much punched out. He is just hugging Jason Robinson and trying to push him around. Agreed. He falls in, and look, look who's holding who. Bell is falling in and then clinching. It's Robinson trying to wrestle himself free. Let go of him. Let go of him, Jason. Step back. Fox. And it sounds like being a little bit one-sided towards Robinson throughout the fight because the way Bell started the fight, you really thought he was going to dominate, and Robinson showed a lot of character coming back in the fight, making it competitive. Fox. 
volare oh, oh pretend you don't see her my heart hi i'm jerry there if you love mob movies you're gonna love mob hits a collection of 22 classic songs making up the ultimate mob movie soundtrack i have but one heart lazy mary you better get up she answered back i am not evil i eat on the pasta twice just because she is so nice angelina all the songs you want one convenient collection it's an offer you can't refuse hey, mambo. Mambo Italiano. To order Mob Hits, call 1-800-357-4640 or send check or money order for $22.95 for CDs or $19.95 for cassettes to the address on your screen. Call now. And welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. ESPN2 along with Miller Holly presenting the co-main event of the evening between Jason Robinson and O'Neill Bell. And you can see that O'Neill Bell has slowed down here in the latter part of this fight, especially in round number nine. And his corner telling him, Max, while we were away break, you need to finish strong. You need to finish like a world champion. Tough to do when you're not fighting and you don't have a time. He hasn't made adjustments. I, I don't know if um, if they just thought coming in they're going to walk over Robinson, a guy who hasn't lost in, in, in a, several years. That's a bad mistake to underestimate any opponent. But all it is is doing that. This is what Bell's doing. He's, he's falling in with right hands. Overhand right, straight right, just falling straight in. Give a shot on you. Give a shot This fight has been extremely demanding on the two fighters. You, you know, look at, you can see the distance for both fighters. Right, one guy did it twice, one guy did it once. The, 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 the interesting thing to me here is that three guys win out of this. The ref comes out a winner, this guy should get more work. He's very good, and he hasn't been trying to make a show of himself, but he's kept control of the fight beautifully. And both guys, Bell, a strong, young, rising contender with a lot of courage and determination and physical strength and punching power. And Robinson, a guy who's been slightly less active than Bell recently, coming in and against a guy like that, weathering an early storm and putting on a good show. Everyone in the ring right now is a winner. Let me ask you this, does the defeat really derail either guy? Oof. Well, listen, of course you'd rather win than lose, clearly. Obviously, the, you know, a win is huge here, but it doesn't matter who wins in the sense that neither guy's rep is going to be damaged. Of course, you think that Robinson has a little bit more to win, a little bit less to lose, because coming in, the feeling is Bell's the favorite. Well, the favorite has thrown some fireworks, and he's seen some connect against him at the same time here. And, and the thing about both of them, they've shown solid chins, and when I say Bell's not making adjustments, that's, that's something you can work on. That's not like, oh, he'll never be a good enough fighter to win a title or something. You can work on not making adjustments, doing the same thing over and over. You, it's not so easy to work on your punching power, your ability to take a punch, your willingness to fight through adversity, and both these guys have shown that. So mistakes that they've made are correctable, and both have reasons to be encouraged. They've been doing a bunch of holding, and that's where it's shown that they haven't been this distance a lot it's in their careers. They've had held over the last several rounds and slowed the pace down. It's, it's a great point, Max, because we started the fight with one guy dominating the other. The momentum shifted to the other, and we end it with both pretty much dancing around the ring. I'm sure they both learned a lot from this fight. This fight right now is a toss-up. We're going to have the official decision from Atlanta coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned. Are you getting the best possible execution of your online trade? Unlike many other online brokers, Daytex proprietary technology routes your order automatically in an effort to get you the best available price. And it does it so quickly that if your online order is not executed within 60 seconds, the commission is waived. We also have Streamer with free streaming quotes so you can make investment decisions in real time. We give you free NASDAQ level two quotes. And when you trade options, you'll find easy to use trading screens and one of the lowest commissions around. In fact, with Daytech, any online equity trade is just 9.99. 
You can even trade before and after market hours. Fund your account and get 10 free online equity trades. To apply, call toll-free 1-877-68-DATEC or visit our special website. Daytech Online. Built to trade. How would you like to earn CD rates without tying up your money? Simple. With the Orange Savings Account from ING Direct, everyone earns the same high 5% rate. With no minimum balance requirement and no fees. And unlike CDs, you can always get at your money. Still think there's a catch? There isn't one. You just didn't have a choice before. Call 1-800-ING-DIRECT for great rates with no minimums and no fees. 1-800-ING-DIRECT. And welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia, where we are waiting the decision between Jason Robinson and O'Neill Bell. It's been an intriguing fight. Ten rounds of action. Gates are just joining us. Here's what you missed. Nostril. Early in the fight, it looked like Bell was going to walk through him. him up with a right. He's got Rocking him with right hands, and Robinson didn't seem to have too many answers. And the round three was more of Bell until Robinson came up with an answer in the form of a left uppercut with his back to the corner that totally changed the momentum of the fight. And the fourth was more of the same, back and forth action. Robinson knocks Bell down coming off the ropes. That's a two-point round. There's Bell doing more business and then Robinson countering the right hands with the left hand. Left hook off the wrong foot. Unless it was a straight right hand and I just didn't see the left hand and I just didn't see it off the angle. And, and then towards the end of the fight became much more mauling and then much more mauling than brawling, but it was still entertaining. Well, it's been an entertaining fight, and now it's time for the official decision. Let's go to the center of the ring. Judge Erwin Deutsch scores about 97-91. Judge Tommy O'Boyle scores about 96-92. And Judge David Lynn scores about 97-92 for your winner by unanimous decision. Fighting out of the blue corner. O'Neill, give him hell. Interesting decision, Max, considering number one, it was unanimous. Number two, the margin of victory in terms of the points there. Well, for Bell. you know, it is Bell's hometown, but we should talk more about this right after this interview. Cassandra got him already. Cassandra's everywhere. I'm coming. I'm coming. Mario, Ohio. congratulations, O'Neill. 15 knockouts in a row, no KO for you tonight. How tough was this fight? It was very tough. I did not underestimate him, but I didn't think it was going to last that long. He's in excellent condition. I didn't mind going to 10 rounds because I know what I did. Road work, a lot of spawn, tremendous spawn. Guys like um, Tom Wynn and his brother, excellent, excellent spawn. All right, you hear the crowd booing, so obviously they think Jason won. What do you think? Well, you heard the, um, you heard the decision, 96 to 91, 95, 91. You, I won, you know, I put on a good show. I knew what I was doing. Yes, I got dropped, but that's experience. Okay, your trainer told me yesterday you could be a great fighter. After your performance tonight, what do you need to do to become a great fighter? Revaluate. I was rushing things. Hometown, first time, well, second time on ESPN, biggest crowd behind me, you know? So that right there, it motivated me, but it can take a lot out of you too. So this really, I use that as a learning experience. All right, congratulations that's again. We'll see you soon. Back to you, Mario. All right, thank you very much, Cassandra. And educated fight fans here in Atlanta, Max, it's not too often that you see a hometown crowd boo one of their own with a decision. Well, and I think that it goes along the lines with our commentary. Uh, maybe Bell did win the fight by those margins. I have to go back, look at a tape, and score each round, as I said, individually, say who's winning each second of this round and why. And there's always that tendency when the underdog does better than he's supposed to do to give him kind of sympathy rounds. Well, he came close enough. I'd like I could give him that round. But I don't think we should necessarily second-guess the judges just because it is the guy's hometown. It could be that a lot of those competitive rounds, Bell was consistently winning by enough of a margin to give it to him. And so all those competitive rounds, you know, you get a fight where 10 rounds, they're all competitive, right. but fighter A wins each round by a little bit. Well, it's on the scorecards, it's going to be a landslide. That was not a lopsided win for Bell, even though the scorecards reflected a fight that was not as close as it actually was. Well, it's one fight that we're both going to watch on tape here very shortly, but 
It's time now to move forward with your favorite segment, Every.